Manchester United's third preseason game ends 2-1 to Arsenal. Before I hear anyone overreact and say we lost and say 10 arg out and anything silly, you clearly didn't watch the game because it was 1-1. It's not 2-1 loss, it's 1-1 because one of the goals was miles offside and would have never counted in a professional game. And in today's review, we're going to focus particularly on the first half. Harry Amass, really good display. Mason Mount, what he showed. Hoyland, what he showed in the 10 minutes was on the pitch. But I have to say... The game was ruined because Yoro and Hoyland had to come off within the first half an hour of the match because of injuries. And we were so good. And that stopped the momentum. In, in the first like 10 minutes, you could see Tenog's tactics. You could see the, this transitional approach. And Man United played good football. And the momentum got disrupted with injuries. And it's like last season wants to start all over again with injuries. And I think this is a message to Ineos of, you know, get Delict in, get two midfield signings in. We need to freshen up. We need squad depth because, yeah, second half wasn't as good. Mostly academy players, academy players that playing out of position. But we need squad depth. We need improvement there. But I actually thought this first half, this team, and we're going to focus on this in my review because, one, this is going to be the players that are going to be involved next season. And two, I start to fall asleep in the second half. But I actually thought there was a lot of positives to take from what was a 1-1 draw. It wasn't a 2-1 loss. It was a 1-1 draw. And I want to start with Harry Amas. But I am going to say this. Euro and Hoyland... Please be okay. Please be okay. Because I tell you what, oh, so annoying. Classic Manchester United. Classic, classic. I just think if those players did not come off injured, we could have probably ended the first half 2 0 up and yeah, it would have been a different result. But do you know what? Result doesn't matter. It's pre season. I want to start by talking about Harry Amos. I think he was one of the standout players in the first half. There was three or four times where he got the ball in such tight space, took this such well-controlled touch, used his like ability to scan around, and then just got through, through around Arsenal, through like three or four Arsenal players. There was a time where he controlled the ball in the middle of the park and just slided past some Arsenal players. There was a couple of times where he did some quick one-twos with Rashford, and I thought Rashford had a much better game because instead of being isolated to do it all by himself, he had support up there and players linking with him, and I thought Mount did very well as well to link with Rashford We'll talk about that later. But what you got in this Harry Amas guy is how technically gifted he is for 17 is not normal. How unbelievably technically gifted he is for 17-year-old is not normal, especially for a fullback. He shields the ball really well. He's happy to control receive the ball in tight angles. And he is totally press resistant while also being explosive carry the ball. He gets the ball, psh, play out the press, explosive carry forward, making it forward, progressive runs, making things happen. This is what Tenor wants in his future left back. This is the Luke Shaw regen. This is a phenomenal player. And of course, he will have to step up physically. He'll have to step up defensively. That's what you expect from a 17-year-old. He's not going to be ready yet. He's going to be moulded. He's going to have to improve physically. But he's got all the technical attributes to become an elite level left back. It's just about physically developing him and all of that, but you could see what phenomenal performance. And I think he worked really well. Rashford, they started fast transition opportunities. There was a period, I think, maybe the 25th minute or so, 23rd minute or so, where it, it's somewhere around then, where it was like Harry Amas and Rashford and Mount and then Ahmad were all combining well, and it could have been an unbelievable goal from Ahmad as well. But the ceiling of Harry Amas is unbelievable because it's not normal for a 17-year-old to be that technically gifted, able to receive the ball in the half turn. The amount of times he was receiving the ball in the half turn and controlling it while playing away from two or three Arsenal players was crazy. And the way he was linking with Rashford and I thought the technical security that players like Harry Amas brought to United was sin because the patterns of play United were playing with Harry Amas, Al Mount, Rashford, Ahmed, Hoyland on the pitch was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. It was so good technically. And it was brilliant. It was brilliant stuff. It's such a shame that they got injured because I actually thought that Mason Mount was probably man of the match. I think his work rate and energy out of possession is top notch. That's something we lacked massively last season with Tenog wanting to play an intense style of play. And I think obviously him being injured meant that it was harder for him to show that and get up to where he was as quick when he returned. But I want to actually say one thing. I really liked that Harry Amas played at left back. Ahmed Diallo played at right mid when he had Sancho and he had Anthony and he would have, you know, a year ago or even a couple of months ago played Sancho and Anthony at right mid. I also like that Mason Mount played ahead of Ericsson and McTominay because last season Ericsson and McTominay were playing ahead of Mount and Anthony and, Am and, and Sancho were playing ahead of Ahmad. You can clearly see that this was the team that Tenok said, these players are my future. Wan Basako, they might sell for Masrawi but he was the only right back there. Casemiro is probably the other player with question marks in the squad, but every other player there is probably going to play for us next season. And I have no issue with that as well. 
I was really impressed by Mason Mount, you know, what he was doing off the ball, his pressing, the way Mason Mount was pressing them so high, you know, making it hard for Arsenal when he was winning those loose balls. He was closing them down quick. He was winning those loose balls. And when he wins those loose balls high up, it makes things happen. It creates opportunities for United. But not only that, I think he links really well with the players. He's an intelligent guy. Like his off the ball movement was giving Rashford someone to pass too quickly because he was coming to the left or coming to the right and giving Ahmed someone to link with quickly. Mason Mount was just there. He was playing as almost not a, a 10, more of a 9, but like a deep lying centre forward, like more of a deeper 9. It was more, he was like sort of hoiling with Mount just behind and then it was Mesbury Mount almost playing as like this two up front, but sort of dropping deeper. But it worked really well because Mount's high pressing and Mount's energy was forcing Arsenal into mistakes. But Mount was also coming into the pocket and getting the ball. And a couple of times where he had some dribbles, he had some quick one-two passes, was moving the ball, was creating things, was really helping United's final fair play, making things happen. This movement was drawing out defenders. It was creating space. I think that, you know, we saw, I saw a really good player in Mason Mount. I saw some really exciting things. And I think Mason Mount will definitely bring and add some stuff to United this season. I think he's practically a new signing, Mason Mount, in my opinion. One player that's practically a new signing because I generally think he's going to get a lot of minutes next season based off his physical abilities is Toby Collier. His decision making, how comfortable he was on the ball and pass selection was very good, especially because they're not his best traits. But very comfortable on the ball, made the right passes, made the right decisions, movement was good. He showed up Casemiro who was making silly passes and rash decisions. What I saw in Collier was a profile and physicality of player that we lacked in midfield. And I've said this last time, Man United lacked so much athletically and physically in midfield last season. You know, Cobby Main was fantastic, but we had this large space that could not be covered by our players. With Toby Collier, the way he strides, the way he covers ground, he's that long-legged midfielder like Alan Water, like Amadou Anana, like Mats Weifer that literally can cover ground out of possession so easily. His ability to cover ground in large spaces out of possession, his ability to run, run such distances, close down players, be fast, be physical, his ground coverage and athletic flooring is what's going to make him so beneficial to United and what I think is the reason he's going to get minutes because that was probably our biggest problem last season and he solved that. Like he does. Like obviously, it depends how he adapts to the Premier League, but... <clears throat> Free pre-season games but so promising. He's a proper athlete. He's so direct. He's able to drive at players. Right at the end of the first half, he made that drive at players with the ball. He's good in duels. He's good at covering ground. He's good defensively. He was cleaning up. He was working well on that dual pivot with Casemiro. I think he would part the main well. I really, really excited to see Toby Collier. If we can bring in a Fafana and a Toby Collier to cover the six, you've got Maino and Mount to cover the eight. You've got Bruno, Mount, Maino, Xerxes, Ahmad to cover the ten. I think Manchester United... A really, really exciting position. And I also thought this front line worked well. It's such a shame we only saw it for 10 minutes. What I thought Rashford, Hoyle and Ahmad just worked unbelievably well. We've got Hoyle and he was just great in 1v1 scenarios. When Hoyle and faces goal, he's unstoppable. We've got two players. Serks, he's really good with his back to goal, linking up play, facilitating wingers. Hoyland's really good facing goal. You put the ball in front of Hoyland, you let him drive at players, you let him run down the channel, drive at players. He's unbelievably good. He kept last two Premier League games, he came off the bench and scored brilliant goals, ball in front of him, driving at players. Today, he does brilliant, obviously against an inexperienced defender, but using his strength to hold him off, small touch to control the ball with a finish. You know, Rude van Nistroyas, what a finish, well controlled. Hoyland, I think, is going to have a monstrous season. I think Hoyland's got every attribute to have a monstrous season. Being coached by Ruvan Nistroy, we play the ball in front of Hoyland. He is a monster, like Sesko, like Harlan. If we can give Hoyland that service, he will be a monster. And if it doesn't work, we've got Xerxes, rotation options, and you put Tenog system play basically two up front with Mount so close next to Hoyland. We could even see Hoyland and Xerxes play in the same system. I thought Rashford looked so much better with left back overlapping. I thought Rashford looked really good. He obviously provided the assist to Hoyland and he also provided the most service to Hoyland last season. But I thought Rashford played some really good forward passes, was making things happen, looked bright. I thought Ahmed was very good on the ball, moving it, getting between the lines, retaining it, going 1v1. Ahmed, when he gets the ball and he goes 1v1, he doesn't give the ball away. Like There's so many times that Ahmed had the ball and he just kind of comes inside and gets around around three players and got the shot off. And at least when Ahmed gets the shot off, he makes the even make a save on like Anthony and he can play some passes and one twos. I thought, Ahmad is just night. Nice. The difference between Ahmad and Anthony on that, that right hand side was absolutely night and day. And I think I really hope we see this front three again. Hoyland's a proper striker. I think Rashford can get back to his best this season. And I think Ahmad's got everything. He's just unlucky not to score. Tactic wise, it was a different formation with Mount pushing very high, like a force nine. And him and Meshby did that together. I don't think Meshby was very good. I think we probably will sell him. It was more of a 2 4 in build up. And I think Anana had a really good game, actually. Andre Anana had a really good game. And he did come off his line and he did come into build up. 
Um, and, you know, he was quite playing a more advanced role, which was nice. I thought Johnny Evans was good in the second half. Uh, there were some interesting performances in the second half as well. Um, and I think, obviously, tactically, there could be differences made when we actually start the season because of the map players that won't be there, like Cobby, etc. But um, he played Mount over Ericsson and McTominay, which suggests the sale of Ericsson and McTominay, which we'll discuss in tomorrow's live. The negatives was that I don't think Mejbri did very well. I don't think he's progressed. Casemiro doesn't look at that again. The biggest negative was the double injury. I think that's where the need for Delict is a centre back. You know, Yoro's been at United five minutes and he's shown that he's a proper United centre back because he's been injured already. Maguire grew into the game, but he did look a bit shaky at times. I don't know if Maguire and Yoro complement each other super well. I thought Yoro looked a lot better next to Johnny Evans as well. And I think if we could move Maguire out, great, but we probably won't. So. You know, it is what it is. Uh, the lack of depth obviously showed, struggled in the second half, but Arsenal had a, a stronger squad on the second half than us, which, you know, you'd expect. Um, I thought the Scanlon kid, look, people are cooking him online, saying, well, Martinelli cooked him. He's never played right back before, at leaving him alone. He's a kid. Um, look, I, honestly, I think we should sell him with He's not progressive enough. He's not technical enough to start. He only comes off the bench with 10 minutes to go and can get a goal. But I actually think if the, the football we're playing in the first half and how we want to be, you can't do that with McTominay. If we can get 30 million for him, I think we should cast in on him. And look, I'll do anything to sell Anthony. I think he's predictable. I think he's not progressing. He's not changing. But yeah, I was Anthony wasn't great. It's only a preseason game, so it can get better. Let me know your thoughts. Smash a like, smash a subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.